They're gonna hang me in the morning, set me out to dry. Gonna take my skin and put it on a flagpole to fly. We're on take one. Ardo cast. We're on. Check, check, check. Welcome back. Check, <laughs> check, checkmate. Am I on? Okay. Happy New Year, right, folks? If, if it is, yeah. Is we it? don't want to put dates on here, because who knows when this... Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. It's so New Year somewhere. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Oh, so, yeah. What, did you have a resolution of some kind? What do they uh, call it? Yeah, I'm going to try to do less um, <laughs> oxygen. Okay. It's a horrible drug it? for you. Well, you're in well, Utah, so isn't your last Yeah, year? exactly. <laughs> Keep the pollution <laughs> levels up, please. <laughs> the red tide or red burn? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. you want to introduce our guest? Yeah, so we have uh, Daisy Vu here. Daisy Vu? Yeah, it's a plethora of amazing stuff that you have from art yeah. to juggling to whatever. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on with this guy, so yeah. uh, when he messaged us to come on, I was excited so, uh, to have him on uh, because of all that. What are you yeah. going to play, the drums? No, I'm putting my mic out. Oh, okay. I was yeah. like, wait a minute, drum roll. <laughs> yeah. Drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, Daisy Boo. And, uh, Tell us how you got in contact with Daisy. He just... Like the curse of every, anybody who gets a hold of us. Yeah. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> but plus, the flame's coming, folks. The flame is but, coming. But plus, so burn what I saw that, that he could do and all this stuff, and it just, you know, perfect. Lives oh. in Salt Lake. Does the juggling. If, if you don't, if his friends probably love him, and the new people that have seen him on the show is going to love him, he's, he's awesome. Cool. And everything. Hell yeah. All these parts that he has about him. Hell yeah. He does. It's cool. And the name Daisy Vu. <laughs> it's like deja vu. Deja yeah, vu. Kind of. That's vu. that was that was like one of the things that I was like. Nice. Yeah. Hell yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. And then let me shout out on again. I'm sorry. Go for it. So you talk to me. Get we soon should be on. If you want to frame any of your art, that kind of stuff, check your stuff out. Yeah. Frame it up with uh, on a Z. Is it Daisy Vu on social media? Oh yeah. Yeah. At, at Vupiter, V O O P I T E R. Instagram. Is it DaisyVu.com? Yeah, DaisyVu.com. We'll show you everything. I'll get all that. Cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll post all, all that right. up. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Well, all right. Well, why not further ado? Shall we, should we <laughs> dive in? This badass. Shall we dive in? All right. In? Yeah, come on in. Daisy Vu, America. Woo! Mira! Was it on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. It's recording. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, welcome, man. Thank you. You bet. That's a nice mic there. It's a, It's got an audio plug-in, so... Cool. I don't have to stop talk right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. No, you're good. No, you're good. <laughs> cool. Yeah, um, so I usually I just start out with like a bio. Yeah. Uh, just tell tell us a little bit about yourself, like where you're from, you know, just give, give us a little background. All right, um, my name is Daisy Vu. Uh, my real name is Tanner. That's always what everyone asks me at first. They're like, is that your real name on your driver's license? But no, I don't like the name Tanner, so I thought I'd do something cooler than that. So I changed my name mostly for art reasons, just because I like graffiti and I like people who have different names. <laughs> but Nice. Yeah, I've been living in Utah my whole life, uh, juggling for 12 years, doing painting and collage and stuff for about four years. Grew up Mormon in good old Utah County. Which which city? Uh, Highland. Highland? Yeah. Up there on top? Up on the top, yeah. Mormon yeah. does shrimps? All the way from the top to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Are your parents worried about you living in Salt Lake? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> like that You're too evil. close to the temple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I literally live like three blocks from the temple. So. We want to live down there. Yeah. <laughs> no, they don't. They don't like it up here. Do you think it's too <laughs> city? It's too city. I'll show you. So, do you come from a big family? Uh, I have three sisters, so like, yeah, cool. decent size. Yeah, cool. I'm the oldest, so I'm nice. The good example, you know. The good example. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hear That's you. That's what I think. <laughs> so 
So next we we get into let's uh, talk a little bit how you got into juggling. Okay. Um, so I started juggling when I was twelve. And, you know, you don't really meet very many jugglers in the world, especially not in Utah. Like, there's a few jugglers here, but most of them are, like, 70-year-old men that have been juggling since the 60s, you mm -hmm. know, when they rode buses to California and stuff and did acid together and everything, you know. Yeah, so yeah. it's like a bunch of weirdos in the juggling community. But luckily, thanks to the Internet, um, I learned from YouTube videos. So I started just from my PE teacher in sixth grade, just taught me how to do three balls. And I sucked at it. It took me so much practice. I would go home every day and I'd be like, okay, I need to pass this PE class. I really want to learn how to juggle because it was something I wanted to do. And I was like, I know the PE class is like, this is like a two-week thing. So we're going to do juggling for like two weeks. And I was like, I just want to get the most out of this because it was like so much fun, even though I was like totally failing at it. Mm -hmm. So I'd go home and I'd look up YouTube videos. This was right when YouTube came out, 2007. There was like 15 or 20 juggling videos on YouTube, and I just watched them over and over and over again, and these people were doing, like, seven balls, torches, like, all this different stuff, and it was like, there's no way, like, I can get to that point, you know, I had no idea mm -hmm. that I would be as good as I've gotten, but I just put in the work, and I just messaged all these people on Facebook, and was like, yo, how do I learn how to do four balls, and they showed me how to do four, and then I came back to my PE teacher, and I was like, Hey, look, I can do four balls. And he's like, whoa, what the heck? Like, how'd you learn that fast? And nice. I just loved it. Yeah. So What's the Guinness record for the most balls juggled? I think the new record is 11. Damn. And I've done nine before, so I'm, I'm getting there. Let's get yeah. you up to, like, 20. 20, no. <laughs> it's like, like, there's the, there was this a couple years ago where the struggle went on, and there's all, he, like, busted all these juggling myths. Mm -hmm. And it's literally, like, just holding all those balls in your hands. Like, it's almost impossible to do more than, like, 15. Yeah. Huh. But, I mean, 15, that's cool. I'm like, but if you had extra fingers. <laughs> if you grew some extra hands. <laughs> did some cheating. What if you yeah, had, like, put side, mitts on. What if you had, like, side robot arms? Yeah. So you had, like, like four arms. Yeah, I mean, people, looks like it, people, people, like, do it. people yeah. kick them up from their feet and stuff. But, no, like, yeah. it's just, like, yeah. so much, like, force and physics and stuff. It's, like, almost impossible. So, I know, like, people are getting to that point, though. I know somebody who's, like working on 13 right now, it's Damn. flash 14, which is just like 14 catches of 14, so huh. it's, it's getting crazy. What's the history of juggling? Did Ooh, you research yeah. that at all? Um, like, I know, like, the, the surface of it. it, I mean, it goes way back to, like, Egypt, basically. Oh, shit. Yeah. Everything like, goes back to Egypt. Right? Yeah, for real, I know. The pyramids, those, those shout people, out to the pyramids. Those people do some shit, they, they were way ahead of their time. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's, like, ancient, like, hieroglyphs of people juggling in Egypt oh, and stuff, and I guess it just got passed down, and it started off with just, like, three things, you know, there was, like, a couple of jugglers, but then back in, like, 1900s, like, around, like, Barnum and Bailey Circus, oh, yeah. that's when it, like, super took off, people started, nice. and, yeah, there was, like, official circus schools, they had, like, travel, like, traveling circuses, that's, like, where most of it went down, but then they had, like, vaudeville shows, and all these, like, little spinoffs, you know? Yeah, it's very, it's... To me, it reminds me of, like, kind of Europeanish. Yeah, oh, it's, it's know? very European. I mean, in the United States, juggling is looked at more of, like, a hobby rather than, like, someone taken seriously. Like, there's Cirque du Soleil, but that's, like, pretty much it. Like, there's not a lot of stuff happening here. But I know jugglers who make 500k a year easy just chilling in Europe. Yeah, just, just like, by there's a park so somewhere. Many, I've heard of that, No, too. not even that's that. That's crazy. Just, there's just so many opportunities for the arts because they're so government funded so they really push like like there's a circus school in sweden actually and it's completely free like all the other swedish schools and you uh -huh. just live there and learn how to juggle in sweden, <clears throat> and it's like a pretty chill school it's funny that you bring that because i watched a documentary with uh steve-o about it. yeah he went to clown school really <laughs> yeah sure that's funny. So, I mean, it's the Barnum same Bay. kind of thing, like, you know, and like, he, like, you know, Bar I think Barnum Bailey sponsored this clown school huh. that he went to. That's cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. I mean, yeah. yeah, you learn, like, a lot, like, that's one thing that I almost wish that I would have learned on a more, like, academic way, rather than just teaching myself in my backyard, is because I watched, like, this group of YouTubers, like, right when YouTube came out, 
And I feel like juggling has like doubled since then, like since mm. the age of the internet. Like, yeah, there's so many more jugglers nowadays. More kids need this. Kids start and guitar juggling. Players. Yeah, playing for real. video games no, I, I, and I, guitar players. I yeah. up, YouTube taught everybody. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> Why straight up quit, up quit playing video games to juggle? Yeah, but he's not a clown. Yeah. But I mean, I kind of wish that I would have gone get, to like a clown uh, school or something. Do you wear an outfit when you're juggling professionally? I mean, I wear just like. Whatever I'm feeling. Just something. I don't wear anything like super costumey, but I like to wear like bright colors or cool patterns or something that just like sets me apart from nice. everyone else, you know. Can just you hacky sack? Attention. Uh, no, I can do like <laughs> foot, hacky foot sack and come tricks. to Egypt. Probably. I mean, oh, they do everything. Yeah, we're <laughs> I go, that's the hippie hit. Beer came from Egypt. You guys ever seen Ancient Aliens? Oh, yeah. I want to watch oh, more of that. So yeah, I watch that. That's, that's my jam. Do you know, that is you know who Action Bronson is? Yeah, yeah I watched that one. You guys got to watch the Action Bronson Ancient I've seen Aliens. That one. <laughs> it makes yeah. no sense, but it's so funny. Yeah. 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 I watch the other ones, but I just yeah. get tired of seeing those guys. I'm just like, let me watch the real ones. Just cut out for a minute. Go ahead, yeah. Crack them <laughs> yeah. He's like, um, had two shows. I like the dinner one that he does. Huh? Yeah, no, he, Action he's Bronson's cool, cool. He's super cool. Yeah, Hell yeah. Ancient aliens are cool. So then, uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, you go up to Snowbird? Yeah, so. Shout out to Snowbird, by Snowbird the way. Snowbird Ski Resort, Snowbird Resort. Uh, -huh. uh, they do Oktoberfest every year. Basically, back in, I think, 80, like 1980. Um, there's some German Im immigrants in Salt Lake, and they were used to partying every October yeah. for Oktoberfest, drinking a whole bunch of beer. And they were like, it's so lame that we don't have one in the United States, we gotta like preserve our culture. So they went up to Snowbird Resort, and were like, hey, do you guys want to help us put on this festival every year? And those people are still alive throwing the same festival, going to no hard shit. every I didn't know October. that was the history of the yeah. Oktoberfest here it's in Utah. Some, some Real it's for like a whole events. month, isn't it? And they're so cool. It's for three months. Damn. And I you're up there all beer. three of those months? Yeah, every weekend and Labor Day. So it's like two or three days a week. Shit. It's a fun time, though. It's so much fun. I bet you the kids just get a kick out of you. Yeah, well, here's the thing is they all the kids' activities are like kind of expensive and stuff. It's more of like an adult kind of venue. Uh -huh. But the kids go up there. And I juggle for them, and they like have a kick-ass time. For Are them. you teaching juggling too, or I mean, like just... I, I do like on requests. I don't try to like go out of my way to teach juggling, just because I don't feel like I'm a super good teacher. Um, yeah. But I I like push people. Like I have business cards that I hand out, and especially when kids are coming up to me like, "How do you do that?" You know, I'll give them one of my business cards and be like, "Give this to your parents. Have them email me, and I'll give you like all the resources you need to learn how to juggle." Because I know people's parents are like, I want my kid to play less video games or get involved with something, you know, yeah, yeah. Like, there's so much Minecraft and Fortnite and everything. It's a positive, so, you're a positive force. Yeah, man. I feel like it. It's, yeah, and yeah. I, mean, I loved juggling as a kid, like, saved my life for sure, so it's like, I want to spread the love. You Dude, know? I want to <laughs> see you juggle like 20, I want to, you're going to juggle 20 balls before you die. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Come I've on, you're going to break that record, dude. I've been doing it for so long, I don't know. I, it's like, it's more than like, that's like another stereotype of juggling is people are like, oh, like the more dangerous or like the more difficult, like the better. But since like the age of the internet, especially juggling has spread out to be like more of like an artistic thing. So people, it's like now it's looked down upon. If you do the same trick as somebody else, then it's like, oh, you're just a copycat, you know? Yeah, yeah. Same as like the art world, you know? Oh, yeah. Nobody wants to copy each other. People want to be original. It's all about, like, originality. Mm -hmm. Whereas it's harder. There's a lot more pressure on you, like, when you're on stage juggling. People are like, I want to see chainsaws. I want to see fire and all this stuff. And you're like, I'm trying to show you my own, like, original, unique kind of way of doing yeah. it, you know? So it's kind of fresh. People are still catching on to it, but you hope that it's That's right. People do, it up. I forgot people do juggle chainsaws. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> they but do. they don't even have a blade on them, right? No, they, I think some people juggle them with a blade, but it's like, they have like a long handle on them and they're like the lightweight chainsaws. Like, I think I could do it. I just don't want to buy chainsaws. So. Yeah. $400. Yeah. yeah. Big investment. <laughs> I mean, it's cool. A badass. It's cool, but like each chainsaw. No, a hundred. I'm just. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's just like I I've been juggling for so long, and I like know like all this stuff about juggling that it's it's getting harder and harder because people are are you know when a community gets to a point of like oh like we found something new and then we've explored the hell out of it and we feel like we've hit every wall of like where this could go. Juggling right now is kind of in a spice where it's like. 
nobody knows like what the next thing is. Like it's it's been the same for like ten years. Juggling's like the new break dancing. No, <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> Hey man, nothing, break dancing was huge. Yeah, oh yeah, sure, sure, man. Nothing wrong with break dancing, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I just, <laughs> <laughs> you just go like break dancing. <laughs> no, I like break dancing. Yeah. There's juggling. There's yeah, that. I don't know. It's just like it's moonwalking. Four step, you know. Yeah, it went from like vaudeville, like I'm gonna do the hardest tricks on stage that's gonna impress the most amount of people, and be like the flashiest, and then it went all the way to the other side where it's like. I want to do some shit that doesn't make any sense and people are going to be like, that's weird, you know? Yeah. Just like some, like, there's a new thing called manipulation where rather than throwing and catching, it's like you roll around your body, you do all these, like, little, like, twirls and flips and stuff and it's more of, like, a visual effect rather than, like, a... Wild juggling? ...difficulty effect. Yeah, like, people do it, like, while juggling and... Have mm. you oh, seen, like, the, the, fushigi, the fushigi balls when people, like, roll around on their mm -hmm. bodies and stuff? Just adding funk to it. Yeah, yeah, just a little funk, you know. So they're like, whoa, whoa. yeah, basically. Yeah. Hmm. So it's yeah, it's it's kind of gone like every which way is what it seems like, but I know there's going to be some new thing that's going to happen. Is there any competition in juggling? Yeah, um, lots. I mean, there's this uh, festival every year called the International Juggling Association yeah, Festival. What is that? I want to go. It's in Texas this year. I like really want to go. You gonna get into it? I don't know. I haven't been yet before. You have to be accepted, or you just no. I mean, it? you just you just pay for the tickets, but they have like a set of stage performers that are accepted, and it's like super intense. Like, film your routine, go through it with all these judges. There's like levels to the judging of videos before they even make it to the stage, and then there's like ten people who go on stage. Hmm. And they like pick winners out of that. Oh no shit! Yeah. Go home with a prize or? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who's Who's the best juggler in the world right now? That's up for debate. Um, there's this guy named Wes Peden though. He grew up in New York, moved to Sweden, and went to that circus school I was talking about. Um, and he's been. They have this uh, video that comes up on YouTube every year called Top Forty Jugglers of the Year, and people comment on it. Like, there's 10 favorite jugglers from the year, and he's won top 40 every year for like 10 years, so he's kind of like Damn. at least the most loved juggler. I'm gonna check that out. Yeah, that guy's cool though. Top I mean, he's, he's super innovative. So, most people were, for a while, like right when they started out, they were trying to just do like all the hard stuff, you know, like it was really an accomplishment if you could do seven balls and then like throw them up and spin around or stuff like that. And the juggling festivals and competitions that I went to, it was very strict rules like, here's like 100 tricks that I know you guys can do, and you pick a combination of any of these tricks, and then perform it on stage, and whoever does it the best wins, basically. Uh -huh. But then it ended up just being like, everyone's doing the same routine, you know, it yeah. just got boring. But this guy, he like tapes props together, he does like, um, just like different stuff, I don't know if you guys know, like Diablo, like the stick, Chinese sticks mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. he does like, uh, devil sticks and poi and all these different he like combines all these different things and then he also makes like like he'll just juggle three clubs which most people would be like oh that's simple but he'll like roll them around his body and do all these like flips and stuff that like uh -huh. nobody has come up with before so do you remember the hippie sticks what they call those that's it, that's devil sticks yeah the hippie like, sticks the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. the guy with the dreads like, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> The other hacky sack. Yeah, for sure. With people doing hacky sack behind him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, juggling Poor has evolved. Poor lean on him. Juggling has evolved a lot. I mean, it got to that point where it's just like a oh, hippie yeah. thing. And now it's like, you have kids like, who are like really good at basketball or something and they're like quitting basketball to like be a juggler because it's like, very, really? like yeah. Like juggler you know, nation. You can make a living off of it. There's a huge community nowadays. Like, like, I know this kid, he's been on Ellen and everything. I've known him for, like, 10 years. And he has, like, 500,000 subscribers on YouTube. And yeah. he's just, like, killing it with social media. Just oh, from yeah. juggling. Who's he? His name's Josh Horton. Josh Horton. Yeah, he does a lot of, like, juggling trick shots and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. well, I know that oh, thing. The kids great. used to do the thing with the water bottle. Yeah. <laughs> See, you know? It and and he's, he's watch cool. Watch it land. Oh, he's cool yeah. because he will find trends like that. And just like incorporate it into juggling and then just go crazy viral, you know, go crazy viral, you know. Yeah. So you just got to kind of be smart with like what you put out there. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I haven't made YouTube videos in a while. I need to get back into get it. Get back into it. Yeah, I should. I'll check it out. Just yeah. give us a quick shout out on your uh, channels. So. Yeah, so so my juggling YouTube channel is associated with my real name. It's Tanner Alder, uh, A L D E R. You can look that up. I got a cool couple of videos up. Um, yeah, I think I deleted most of them because they're so cringy and old, and I was like yeah. a little annoying kid, you know. Mm -hmm. But I got the good ones up still, so you can go search those on YouTube. And then your Instagram. My Instagram is Vupiter, V O O P I T E R. And then Facebook. Uh, I don't use Facebook. Nice. I like that. I like <laughs> my friends that. is my grandma on Did Facebook. Did you tell yeah, the website? Uh, yeah. DaisyVoo.com. DaisyVoo.com cool. is where Daisy you can you, you can meet, is everything linked there. Yeah, right? so you just go on the homepage, DaisyVoo.com, and it'll be like Twitter, cool. Instagram, yeah. YouTube. Cool. All That's what I saw. Like, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Well, now we're going to talk about art. So yeah. you've got your portfolio here. I looked yeah. through it. Um, Tell us a little bit about your art. Okay, um, so yeah, I was in I was into juggling for like a long time, um, and I kind of felt like I had exhausted it, and like I needed to try something else for a little while, and then that turned into the past four years I've been kind of off juggling and more into art. But I also feel like that's helped my juggling in a few ways, just like looking at it differently. Um, so I'm trying to get back into juggling. But yeah, so I was in college at UVU before they kicked me out of there. Um, and I Damn, you're this... getting kicked out of everywhere. Well, dude. I mean, I kind of kicked myself out. Classic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Riff rap. <laughs> Riff rap. <man. laughs> I wish I got school. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I was just in college, and one of the required classes was this art history class, and I'd pop an Adderall and I'd go to art history class, and I just learned so much stuff, and it was just so cool, and I had the best time in this art history class, um, and it was like. This specific class was like prehistoric art all the way up to like pop art. So we learned like everything about art history. From just Egypt to, to Andy Warhol. Yeah, uh -huh. and it was just like so much stuff that you see every day, you know, just like spinoffs of all these art pieces that are like 4,000 years old, but you just don't even think about it. But there's like so much interesting stuff behind it. And I just loved that class so much just because I learned like all this art history that I didn't even know about, and I was like, well, that's boring, you know, like, I don't want to learn about the Renaissance and everything, but he just went so deep into it that I just, like, had such a fun time yeah. doing this art class, and then, um, yeah, I was just, like, picked up some paint supplies from Walmart, and was like, I want to screw around with art a little bit, you know, I've never done art in my life, I don't have any training or anything, and I'm a complete shit artist, but I have fun with it. <laughs> Like, I don't know. I, I like it just because it's more of, like, a different form of expression. So, yeah, then, then I kind of got kicked out of UVU, uh, moved to Salt Lake with some friends, um, and just walking around here. Like, I didn't have a car or anything yeah. when I lived here, and so I'd like, have to take the bus and walk around and everything. And I saw all this graffiti downtown. It was like, a lot of good so shit sick. down there. It's so cool. Yeah, yeah. There's some cool graffiti. You guys know about that place on State Street? It was like a abandoned complex they're turning it into apartment buildings mm. but uh they skate there the five yeah, two one the five two one is it right behind like diabolical I records i think i know i've, I've seen, seen yeah. i've seen stuff yeah but they, they that place there. was smothered in like the prettiest graffiti and they just tore yeah. it down and like so bummed mm. but yeah i'd go i'd go walk around there late at night you know and just i didn't really have a job back then so it was like I'm just gonna get drunk and walk around downtown <laughs> and spray paint some stuff you know yeah that's it was so it much is. fun so yeah i just screwed around with that um, I knew it needed to come up with, like, a cool name to do art under because I didn't want my, like, real name to be doing it, like, when I was doing graffiti. And I only did graffiti, like, a little bit. Off and I'm that the police don't know about it, but, you know. Yeah. Um, so me and my friends were just screwing around. And I was like, you know how they, back in, like, 1800s, women would write books under men's names so they'd mm -hmm. sell better? Yeah. I was like, what if I, like, did art... So they're not going to see my face where it's juggling, like I'm on stage, you know, they're seeing my face. What if I did art under a woman's name, and then they, like, find out my name and are like, oh, that's kind of weird, you know, and it's just kind of, like, yeah. more memorable. It's like Mark Twain, that's not even his real name. Yeah, exactly, yeah, but it's just, like, yeah. a cool, catchy name, you know. Yeah. So I was like, I want to find, like, a cool woman's name that's, like, kind of more feminine, because I'm, like, a more feminine kind of guy, too, I just, like feminine stuff, like usually I have my nails painted and my hair colored and stuff, um, but I was like screwing around with female names, and then also I was trying to think like, oh one day I might get a girlfriend, <laughs> so I, I don't want 
would have the same name as my girlfriend might potentially have. Yeah, you know? Daisy's so a good like, name. Daisy's a cool name. Like, I don't really meet very many Daisies, so I was like... They're not around anyway. Name. That's more of like a yeah. 70s name. Yeah, for sure. So yeah. I was like, yeah, I'll yeah, just yeah. go by Daisy. And, and then I kind of was screwed on with like Deja Vu and everything. And I was like, oh, Daisy Vu. That's kind of like a cool name. Cool. Yeah. I dig it, man. So yeah. 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 Now every time I introduce myself at the bar or anything, I'm like, I'm Daisy. And people are like, what? That's yeah. your real name? <laughs> but they never forget it, so it worked. Yeah. You know? Well, so I was looking through your art. It looks like uh, you got a mix of collage, uh, yeah, some random drawings, um, and you got some writing in there too. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was super at the beginning influenced by Jean Michel Basquiat. Oh yeah, um, I just see watched that a whole bunch yeah. of documentaries yeah. from him and how he uses like words in his paintings and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, he's not the most like realism kind of artist, and I can't do realism. Because I don't have the training. You know? No, you can do it. I mean, I could if I put yeah. the time in, but yeah. I just kind of wanted to have my own thing, too. So I just kind of, like, incorporated a lot of his stuff into it. Um, I like collage just because you sit down with a blank canvas and you're just like, oh, crap, like, what am I going to do with this, you yeah. know? But then I just find all these little pieces of, like, magazines or photographs and stuff that I take and then throw them in there. It kind of, like, helps me push forward a painting. Nice. So, yeah, that's just kind of where that came from. Laziness, you know? <laughs> It looks kind of like I, I kind of get it with the crayons and the vaginas and the penises and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but like, what what is it? What is, what do you? I'm trying to say if I was a four year old or something, how would you yeah. explain how not? How would you explain how what you're trying to express with that? That's a great question. Um. I never really know. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's like no, best. that's good. I'm not trying that, to say it in like a pretentious yeah. way. Yeah, it's more, like, I think it's just kind of like just, me. It's expression. Yeah. You're just yeah. expressing yourself. The way, the way that yeah. I started doing art is I'd sit down and I'd think so hard, like, I want this to be this certain way, and it never turned out that way, and then I'd get pissed off and be like, I can't do art. I'm not accomplishing anything that I want to do, and it just I felt like discouraged, you know? Yeah. So then I was like, all right, complete opposite. I'm going to let go completely. I'm just going to do whatever is like first thought, best thought, you know. And if it sucks, it sucks. If it's good, it's good. If it's in between, then like whatever, it can work with yeah. it, you know. Yeah. You could, like Bob Ross said, you know, happy accidents. You just make something. You can always fix it later. Um, but yeah, I mean, like most of my stuff is just like flow of consciousness and that's, that's like the kick I got on it yeah. just like you that's what kind of right I just but I like I'm not gonna myself. go and fix anything I'm just gonna yeah do it. I mean and that's that's where that's I, awesome. I went from being discouraged and being like I can't do art like this is ugly to being like surprising myself because I sit down with the canvas and all these different things around me and that's also what I like having like cutouts for collages watercolors acrylics markers crayons pencils like all the stuff so I can just reach them grab whatever I think I'm going to add next, and then I just start doing it, and it usually ends up okay. Nice. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Have you sold anything? I don't think so. <laughs> it's you on the sales I, I mean, market. Yeah, I know. He's tagged up, though. Yeah. yeah. I've sold a couple things just to, like, friends. Oh, cool. But no, like, original works. I'm kind of anal, so I'm like, I don't want to sell an original yeah. work, because that might be worth something more in the future, and also, I like it. Like, a lot of the stuff that I feel comfortable selling is also stuff that I, like, want to hang on to, you know? Yeah. So, I kind of need to just, like, step out of my comfort zone and be like, all right, I'm selling this. This is, like, an expand Crazy. So, um, you uh, grew up in Highland. You went to Highland, is, what, is that Warren? Lone Peak High School. Lone Peak. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lone yeah. Peak. It was a crazy high school. I used to play <laughs> football. I don't think Lone Peak was around in our day. Um, in high school... Mostly juggling, like, I mean, I started juggling in sixth grade, so by the time I got into high school was when it kind of peaked, and when I was, like, <laughs> juggling the most, and, like, the most involved with, like, the juggling community. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm turning my phone, because it dings. That's something you're off. Those Tinder notifications. That's rude. It's like, going to, it's like going to a movie, and your phone dings. <laughs> it's not fair. Come on, folks, we're doing a serious motherfucking podcast. Okay, here. all right. Can't have a phone, Dean. We got a recap. It's Start fine. It, it all goes. You know me. <laughs> so yeah, in high school, I didn't do a whole lot of like sports or anything. I tried student council for a little bit. Um, it was not what I was expecting because I was yeah. like, 
I was like, I'm the good kid. I'm going to make everyone feel welcome and make everyone like have a good time in high school. <laughs> but then I got onto student council and I was like, all these people are bitches. Like, they're trying to control everything in the school. And yeah, I was like kind of like lower level student counselor because I wasn't super popular. So I was just kind of like in the middle of the mess. And then luckily I went to juvenile detention and then they kicked me off. So that's how I finished. Hell school. yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, got, we got a young criminal here, yeah. folks. That was in the young. Yeah, yeah. Cream that was when he went youngin. Youngin. He's was, older now. I was five days from being eighteen, so I was lucky. Nice. Yeah, I just blew up a water bottle. That was it. it was stupid. Like a, a dry ice bomb? Uh, kinda, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Or like the uh, Mentos bomb? It was like um, toilet cleaner and tin foil. What? Damn. Yeah, those things are cool. You should try them. They're Don't tell me illegal, this. I'll try it. It's cool. Yeah, I'll try them. But yeah, now, did you do it just out in the open? Or yeah, so it was like. New Year's, actually, and uh, we had a bunch of, like, leftover gunpowder and stuff, and we're like, let's go light off all these fireworks in the school parking lot, and we're like, it's late at night, like, nobody's gonna be in this parking lot, you know, so then we made these, like, toilet cleaner bombs, and I guess some people, yeah. we were stupid, and we didn't know, how, like, how to be efficient with this, but we were just like, let's, like, blow up some... Like, I don't even know, just some junk, like nothing. Don't try this at home. <laughs> don't, don't try this at home. No, get a kit. My get friend kit, got chemical burns from it, what? actually. What? Damn. Yeah, but uh, we were just blowing some stuff up, and a no. cop drove by and saw us, and then he pulled up and was like, what are you guys doing? And we're like, oh, just some fireworks, you know? And he's like, well, you're on private property. And the, the, the shitty thing is, this cop that arrested us, when I was like eight years old, I'd always go to this grocery store, and I would terrorize the hell out of these employees. You know, I'm like eight years old, bored in the summer. We'd like play hide and go seek in the store. We'd like steal stuff. We'd mm -hmm. like drink all the soda. Like annoy customers, like film people. You know, it's just like so annoying. And this guy was the boss at this grocery store. And then he went on to become a police officer for the what? same city. So he pulled up and he's like, I oh shit, I remember you guys, and we were like, oh, Brandon, like, how are you doing, you know, like, trying to be all a homie with him, and he's like, no way, like, I'm getting revenge, he literally was like, I'm getting yeah. revenge, like, you guys are going to juvie. What? Did you ever do oh, the milk, shit. did you ever do the milk thing, where you fake drop the milk in the supermarket? No. No? No, that was, that was way ahead of our time. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's a fake drop milk thing? Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we, it went, like, viral for a little yeah. while. We weren't, like, that. Kids, yeah, we were just, they just, kids they just, just made like, bombs. Yeah. These guys were ripping <laughs> out. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> we were, we were just make the bombs. Up gangsters in Ireland. <laughs> but, yes, what, this guy... What do you do in the grocery store these days? We, uh, chemicals. Pieces, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> the we grocery store bomb. We didn't parking lot. We didn't try to hurt anybody, but, yeah. You know, there's like a second degree felony, littering no. charge, all the stuff. Dude, those cops in Utah like County got they're pretty so hard. bored. They're just so Jeez. bored. They're like, yeah. anything that happens, they're like, oh, oh I'm gonna you weren't. It, it, this was in Salt Lake. Then. No, this was, was Highland. Of course. Yeah. I've been in trouble in that small town. So that was that was the moment where I went to juvenile detention. I met some cool kids. We watched all of the <laughs> Saw movies, played dodgeball, had like one of the best weekends of my life. And on top of that, there's this girl that asked me to this dance and I didn't really want to go. And so I literally called her from juvenile detention and was like, yo, I can't go to the jam to the dance, I'm locked up. Oh, oh shit. Dude. And she's like, you're lying. And I was like, no, like, I'll show you afterwards that I'm, <laughs> I was not lying. And that was great. <laughs> so I got out of a dance, I got off of work, I got out of school for a couple weeks, I was on house arrest. So, I don't know. Just Everyone for was, lighting a fire. Yeah, I don't know. I thought it was cool. It was a fun story. Huh. You gotta see that that small town. Yeah, there's some bad stories. Like people that don't want to be a Jew are put it. Have you heard of Have you heard of for profit prisons for kids? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's an end. It's it scary. They make they money off of it. Yeah. yeah, like the, the you get a kid light a firecracker and throw it at a window and yeah. they send you to prison for prison with you people know? that have done crimes yeah. for years. Oh yeah, yeah. like yeah. It, it, anyway. they make money off. They need to figure that out. But I mean, it was chill for me. I felt bad because there's a lot of kids in there that were like super nice, good kids. They just came from like broken homes and they were in there for years. I mean, one of the kids had been there since he was like 12 years old for stealing cars when he was 12. That's actually badass. That is badass. He was a, <laughs> he was, he was a badass kid. I think he's probably richer than all of us. Right? Yeah, he's a smart dude. You can steal a car at 12. This yeah. kid's going somewhere. I was scared of doing anything wrong at that point. So. <laughs> But yeah, at that point I was just like, you know what, I'm off student council, I'm on house yeah. arrest and stuff, and that's when I like kind of 
left the Mormon church and cool. started experimenting with art and cool. stuff like that. So do you do writing on the side too, a little bit? Little um, bit? I've always had, just for the past few years, I've always had like a journal that I'll just kind of like there you go. screw around in. Um, and I that, think a lot of us Mormon kids grew up with a journal. Yeah, for sure. I, yeah, my that's, mom, what, that's how I started my writing. My mom went yeah. hard on me for journaling. Yeah. She's like, every day you're going to write in your journal, you know. Yeah. And it kind of turned from like writing about my day to just like writing about like things I thought about or things I saw and just like more... I don't know. Like I don't. I look at back at journal writings like a lot when I do art, and so it's nice for me to like look back and be like, oh, like here's this scene that I saw from today that was like kind of interesting that I like wrote about, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I'm gonna like turn it into a painting, you know. See, I've been doing that for a few years, but I I don't take writing like seriously. It's more of just like a side practice. You know? Yeah, that's how I am with my writing too. So yeah, I would. It's suggest good suggest you get one of these old school typewriters. Though. Yeah, no, that's yeah. too much of a pain for me. I don't yeah, know. Hell no, man, they're fun as hell. <laughs> yeah, like I don't know. I like just like scribbling in my notebook and drawing things too, and just like screwing around. Typing's it. though kind of like juggling though. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's you multitasking know? for sure. <laughs> it's a skill. take you into the moment, right? Yeah. But I I definitely think like writing has helped me in a lot of other ways, just like with juggling and stuff, especially and art. Um, you just like express yourself on a piece of paper and then like turn it into something else, you know. Let's take you. Let's take us inside the mind of a juggler. Okay, okay. go for so it. So you're in, you're in the action of juggling. Yeah. Do you have thoughts on your mind? Like, are you thinking like, oh shit, I forgot to get the milk from the yeah. That's store the thing today. is that I or is it just completely zen out and sometimes like, I'll nuked out. It, it's it's either or. Like sometimes I'll get on stage and I'll just be like so in the moment, like focused on what I'm doing. Especially if there's like a huge crowd, that'll definitely like put some pressure on it. Mm -hmm. But so there's two parts of Oktoberfest, and I do like a 15 minute stage show, and then the rest of the time, I just walk around and whoever wants to like walk up and talk to me while I'm juggling or throw a tip in my hat, you know, they can do that. And when I'm outside just screwing around, like, sometimes there's people walking past me, they don't even, like, take a second look, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'm just, like, thinking about whatever, like, work or, yeah. Well, have, you ever thrown, <laughs> have you ever thrown one of these juggling things at a heckler? No, but a kid did one time. <laughs> That's not a kid. Here's, Utah kids are crazy. Utah kids are the scariest kids in the entire world. Like, they're, they're ruthless. They have no idea, like, how powerful they are. Because this little kid, he's, like, four years old. I dropped one of the clubs, and I'm like, I like to get kids involved because they, they like it too. Yeah. I'm like, hey, can you pick that up and hand it to me? I said it like that. Hey, can you pick that up and hand it to me? And he picks it up, and then I just see this, like, devil look on his face, and he holds it like this and throws it like like baseball pitch. Like, it was so crazy. And I moved to the side, and it flew right past my face, and then it just smacked this guy in the head. Yeah. And he thought it was me, so he started cussing me <laughs> out. He's like, you're going to buy me a new shirt and a new mug because he dropped his mug on the ground. Oh, he shattered. He spilled beer everywhere. He was so mad. And, of course, this kid just bolted. You know, yeah. so he's blaming it all on me. I had to buy this guy a new shirt and buy him a new beer and everything. What? I'm like, these kids are crazy. Like, they're losing me money. <laughs> don't wrangle that kid. Man. Yeah. I know. It was, it was funny. But, yeah, I mean, I don't hit anybody. I'm more aware. That's the a funny thing, too, is I'll be juggling, like, five clubs. But I also know... I gotta be watching out for people because there's people that are drunk. They're texting while they're walking. Oh, yeah. They have no idea what's going on, and I'll be like just struggling. And I've hit like almost hit people a couple times, but I'll just be like, look out, you know. Can you juggle bowling pins? <laughs> like real bowling pins? <laughs> um, that's like a huge rumor. Like bowling pins are impossible because just because they're they're, too heavy. they're so bottom heavy. Yeah. yeah. Like, you'd, it'd flip in, like, the strangest way. Like, these these clubs that I use, uh -huh. you'll pass me one of those. Yeah. These are, like, very... It's So it's a wooden dowel down the middle, uh -huh. and then it's wrapped in plastic. Mm -hmm. um, it's very, like, evenly balanced. Like, you can just, like, hold it in the middle, you know, and it's, Perfect. like, balanced perfectly on either side. And then they have the bulb shape just to, like, add more, like, effects to it. Like, you can, like, slap the bulb back, you know, like... Balance it like on either end, kind of thing. But yeah, it's just it's more just for like use rather than 
weight, so they're like pretty mm -hmm. evenly weighted, you know. Yeah, let me see one of these. But bowling pins, yeah, those are. Don't see, and then much. you could beat somebody over the head with it too. <laughs> that, it's not. Yeah. It's, they're kind of bouncy though. I don't know. I yeah. hit myself in the head all the time. Yeah, yeah. I got no skill. <laughs> there we go. You gotta start somewhere. Yeah, there you go, it. folks. Let's try the triple or the double. Oh, bam! One and a half. I'm a Jones. <laughs> <laughs> just, just get on it. Grab it. Just throw it on it. You got any? Throw me those. You got any questions? You want to try? Just throw Step me. in front of the camera. Dude, I always, I always have these. Well, this. These guys. Oh shit! Oh shit! These what? guys show up, talk to the camera. There. Confident as hell. And like, <laughs> exactly <laughs> like that. Yeah, it's not too hard. Leave it to the pros. <laughs> yeah, leave it to the pros. But, yeah, these guys but I like how it's freaking the mix, man. These guys, yeah. every year without fail, there will be some, some drunk little white yeah. frat boys. Well, they yeah. show up with some girls, <laughs> and they're like, yo, babe, watch me juggle. You know, they've never juggled yeah. their whole life. And they just come up to me, and they're like, yo, give me that. And then they try and juggle, and all their friends are like, ha, 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 you know. It's just like, that's like the worst. Yeah. <laughs> I hate it. I'm like, dude, nobody cares. Like, leave me alone. You don't have to give me money. You just go in. Yeah. You know, it's kind of funny. Classic. I know the ceiling's low, but what can you do right here? All right, oh. let's, let's try it out. Yeah. I'll do some few clips. Yep, I'm going to step out for a second. This is the main... Where are you going? Is he back for Body break, no, yeah. So three clubs right now is like yeah. the main, like, kind of trend right now in juggling. Mm -hmm. People... Um, moved down to three clubs just because they realized you can do so much with it if you put in the time mm -hmm. to like yeah. learn how to like manipulate, change it up. Nice. That'll end up, that'd be cool. So cool. <laughs> balance on the foot, you know. So balance There's on just the like so many rolls. Yeah. I think you can do with we do clubs. have a low ceiling here. But he's doing some magic. Figures on the shoulders. Oh, man, let me get that. There we go. So people have been coming up with some really creative yeah, new well, stuff. You've you got a creative, man. See, that's the thing is for you it's creative, but for me it's the same stuff I've been oh, watching yeah. on YouTube for the past 12 <laughs> years, you know? I got gotcha. you. So i got to kind of like expand my thinking with this. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Very nice. And I, you got a lot of that stuff on the line. Yeah, I'll, I'll get sure. it and on your Insta. So you leave Juvie, what do you, where do you go then? You, did you do any college or anything like that? Or? Um, I, yeah, I went to UVU for That's a right. couple of years. Um, I did like two and a half fall semesters. Um, it was fun. Like I really liked college mm -hmm. and I could afford it just because my parents were like, you know, like do anything with your life besides go yeah. back to Juvie. So <laughs> they were like, yeah, we'll pay for college. Yeah. You know? So I had fun. Like I really enjoyed it. Cool. Um, took a bunch of art classes just because they started to interest me. I had never really done art before, just like when I was a kid a little bit. But yeah, I mean, I did like a couple semesters. I just learned a little bit. Um, and then my final semester, I went back and it was just on the waiting list for so long and they wouldn't let me into any of classes. I was like an honor student at that point too. So I was like really going for it. But they were like, oh, we can't let you in because you were like on the wait list for too long. And so I was like, all right, peace out. And then Isn't that the perk? Having gone Isn't back. That the purpose of the waiting list is to get on? I know, yeah, that's You've been on it too long. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? I've been waiting <laughs> Wait, forever. Right? Yeah. Like, I should be at the <laughs> first of the row. Yeah. That's, what, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> like, I went to the dean of the art program. Well, here's the thing is my last semester, I took all these art classes, and I'm not trying to be like a braggy douchebag or anything, but like I really loved it, and I got first in like most of my classes. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was like acing everything. I was succeeding. I was there to learn. I really enjoyed what I was doing. And there's a lot of kids since it's like a, I don't know what they call it, but it's like a school where they have a bunch of people from everywhere coming in, and it's just like a really entry level school. Like you don't really have to have requirements to get in. They like they have like most of the basic like business classes and stuff. Isn't it kind of like tryouts for BYU? Yeah, basically. That's a good way to put it. And so they bring like a lot people, of international kids into People to fail suffering. high school, they go yeah. to UVU with the idea of like, I'm going to transfer to BYU after I get good grades, you know? So most of the kids there, they're just like lazy. They don't really care about what's going on. Nobody there. There's not, not like a huge social life or anything. Yeah. But I was trying to like make it happen because I was like, all right, this is the only school I can afford. This is where I'm at. All the professors there were amazing. Like they have really cool. amazing professors. Nice. But yeah, they just didn't want me, so I was like, I don't want you either. 
So one thing we also talk about sometimes is uh, any strange urban legends growing up. That's what I'm saying. Strange ur urban legends. <laughs> I was about to say about. But he, <laughs> that's why he wasn't allowed. Or family legends. You know, we like <laughs> to talk like about strange things. things. Compile them all. <laughs> <laughs> any I mean, ghosts walk around up in Alpine? No, just like weird Mormon things that I thought were normal uh -huh. for 18 years, and then I. Yeah. Like, moved to Salt Lake and was like, whoa, like, I cannot believe that I used to do, like, so seriously. Yeah. I mean, as far as art goes, I was just trying to push myself into learning a new skill, take a break from juggling. Um, I just got super into the art world for a while. I had some friends who went to Snow College. Uh, we threw a few, like, of our own shows down there. Like, the gallery system is kind of screwed up sometimes, yeah. as you probably know. Um, but we were just like, let's make our own gallery. So we did a couple of shows in, like, my homie's garage and... Just like, I like having my website online just because I can throw up whatever on there, you know. Uh, do a little paint marker at daisyvoo.com on some yeah. walls. Or have you done any art around. shows like the, the Utah Arts Festival? Or no, I haven't. Park I mean, City Arts Festival? I've been Festival. trying to get into some things like that, um, but no. Most you should of just, just roll You should just roll, roll up. Roll yeah, up there. Yeah, I think it should. Like, I mean, Could have came to Art Week here. Put, put a hat out yeah. and just start juggling outside yeah, the Utah for Arts real. Festival. And have your paintings around? When I was like 12 and I first started juggling, actually, I remember in Park City they were throwing another festival and my family was just hanging out up there for the day and I had my juggling stuff with me and I was like, whoa, all these people are here, like, I've never street performed before, I'm in the street performing, and then like half an hour I made like a hundred bucks. Dude, crazy. I bet you, <laughs> you can even go down to Temple Square when the lights <laughs> are Oh, no. no. Come on, man. <laughs> he doesn't want to get arrested again. Uh, Mormons are cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, so I'm stuck with them. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's so much money. easier said than done, like, like sometimes I'll try and go downtown, you know, by City Creek, or if there's an event going on, Yeah. and sometimes I'll... Fourth of July? No yeah. money, no money. Like, I'll be, juggling, I'll be juggling, and performing Liberty the Park. same way as I do at Oktoberfest, but I'll make no money, and then other um, days I'll make like, decent money, so it's just kind of hit or miss, you know. Have you ever tried a Vegas stint? Would you do... I mean, uh, we went gambling in Vegas a couple years ago, and I tried juggling on the strip, and people were just ignoring me, so... Really? Yeah. You no just gotta, you gotta find, like, an in. Like, people... It's a very niche market. Well, I have you yeah. done. And people, people want... Any show I do. People, when they're just open. going about their day, people, when they're just hanging out, doing whatever they do, they don't want to get annoyed by some juggler asking for their money, you know? But whereas Oktoberfest, people are there to go see things. So they're like, yeah. oh, I'm going to see as much as I can. And then they see a juggler, and then they're buzzed on top of that. And they're like, more like easy to work with. Yeah, you know? street style. Just bring that juggling in. Street equipment. style, dude. Like, get yeah. out. And you should go <laughs> to Venice bus stop. Beach. Do you get rid yeah. of Venice uh, Beach? No, I haven't. But yeah. I have, oh, you got to go there. all the time about all these yeah. things. Uh, I have, that's the thing. Is Washington, like, D.C. I've got oh, all this stuff there's... under my belt, but I need to like go out and do it more. Too. Yeah, I went to Venice Beach and... I've been there multiple times. I went there in high school, and there was this guy. He had a bass that he was playing with his toes. Yeah, that's sick. That's sick. <laughs> he had a guitar. He had a drumstick attached to his shoulder, to his uh, elbow, yeah. with a drum in the back. See, people are crazy. And he was playing like twelve or you know five, six different instruments at once, yeah. dude. That's and then just... like he freaked out on the crowd, like, "Ain't nobody gonna pay nobody for this. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't doing this for free." Yeah. <laughs> Like people are just like kind of. They'll creative. stop. They know how to do it. It's yeah. gonna be creative in Paris, right? Yeah. Like, don't well, wait. The thing with street stop. performing, the thing with street performing, is I know some absolute shit jugglers. They don't know what they're doing, but they're good performers. They know how to communicate to crowds. They know how to draw a crowd in. They know how to make them laugh, and they make like bank. You know. Whereas mm -hmm. me, I grew up just focusing on the juggling. So I'm a really good juggler, but I'm so new to like the performing aspect of it, mm -hmm. and that's where I need to like. Step up my game. You, know. they'll you, pop, should, they'll you should come up with a costume, dude. Yeah. The, what? The, what? Identify. No, it identifies him as uh, the certain performer. Yeah, he doesn't have to be a clown or anything like, like that. Blue Man just some sort of yeah, you know, some yeah, sort of costume something, or something. Yeah. You know, like Daisy that that people recognize you by. Yeah, for sure. Know? I think so. Yeah. I mean, like especially in Utah, it's easy. People are like, "Oh, you're the juggler," because there's not a whole lot of jugglers here. Yeah. Know? But it, it's definitely harder than you think to like expand. Like there's. There's plenty of needs for juggling in the world, but people don't want to so you'll, uh, take the time out of their day to hire me. <laughs> yeah. I'd say you do 19. Juggle 19 okay. balls. Yeah. 
And then to have everybody watch you do the 20th ball, uh -huh. you have to pause for a second and get donations to see right? the 20th. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For real, it works Folks, like that. no one's ever done I've seen this. them, dude. I'm I, I just, your money. That's how they perform and shoot the break dancers I saw. They like paused and waited. They're like, okay, everybody here. <laughs> One more, but he's got his favorite move. You got to yeah. wait for it. <laughs> the most money I've ever made street performing, this guy at Oktoberfest, he had his big beer sign and it was empty. And he set it behind me so I couldn't see it. And he was just plastered. He's like, I'll give you a hundred bucks if you throw your ball into this stein without looking. And he's like, you can have as many tries as you want. I'll be here all day. <laughs> and ever, nobody was watching me or anything. I was like, all right, cool. Like, I got time. I can hang out and try and throw this ball. Yeah. So I was juggling five, throw it up behind my head, and it falls. And it missed the sign, like, so many times. But then he kept telling his homies, yo, come here. This guy's doing this cool trick, you know. And then all of a sudden, there's 300 people around me. And people were giving me money after bill after bill after bill being like try again try again try again you know and i made like a whole bunch of money just nice. I, I don't even think i made it into this time but people <laughs> loved it you know yeah, yeah <laughs> just gotta make a show out what of about it. naked yeah. yeah naked i mean this might for that <laughs> pervert <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's the attention giver yeah He's not here to get naked if that's the strip you. club yeah, <laughs> that, that could be a cool game yeah <laughs> Catch a ball in your ass jeans. Yeah. I mean, I have to grow a little bit for that. Maybe. Maybe in the future. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I know. It's it's just, yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff with juggling that most people don't know about because they just yeah. see the surface of it. But oh, yeah. When well, you look deep thanks for really, coming by and yeah, taking us into fun. the inside world of juggling. For sure. People are going to know more yeah. about juggling after today. Yeah. The The... We have ten followers now? Maybe two. Okay, two, two more followers. people in the world are going to know about juggling. At least I, at least I got to know. And the art and the tag. I mean, you do, what's great is you're a, you're a reader of it. Yeah. Me, no, I, I love the niche it. market, though. I love the underground. The under, yeah. we're, we've always, we always try to get people in from the yeah. underground. Because some it people are just like... And the cool, name, the, you know. the description of the name... I just kind of wanted to just make my own thing. Yeah, that's and awesome. And it's, it's been fun. That's, cool. It's not going to be on. And especially though. integrating like art and juggling together. Like sometimes I'll like paint something and then be like, how can I express that through juggling? Or sometimes I'll do like body movements with juggling yeah. and be like, I'm going to express that in art. And then just kind of like... Art, juggling, dynamite. It's all together. Yeah. Blowing sticks blowing and dynamite. Up, <laughs> getting arrested. Fake sticks and yeah. dynamite. That would be cool. I've just put a fake fuse on <laughs> some red things. <laughs> like, oh! yeah. I'll blow these out yeah. if I can juggle them. I need, I need 500 bucks in my hat right now or else I'm going to die in front of them. That's a, that's a good idea. Since I had some time about eight years ago, so I've made some focus. progress along the way, but I got a little ways to go. I can do three and two hands and two and one. I can do the occasional pass. I tried to do four, but they wound up on the floor, and that's when I had to ask. You see, juggling is an ancient art. It's been around a long, long time. There's the folks that can do five and six, some can even juggle eight or nine. Some juggle torches and swords, axes and more, some even juggle knives. It's a lot of hard work, so tell me who was the first jerk who said this is how I spend my time. I don't want to harm, I don't want to I don't care. Money coming down? Coming up? Oh, it's going. He's taking, taking money. Okay, yeah. I thought they were dropping money nah, on us. I wish that'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Let's manifest this. Make yeah, I love that book. So good. Yeah, thank you. You bet. I and mean, thank you. I feel like personally, I make five things and I like one of them. So why not the pink hair with us and nails painted? I'm poor. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get some money first. <laughs>